Okay, let's go, let's go a little closer. From right there, go ahead and engage lower square. Here we go, breaking open part two of my review of the outstanding Ruger 1022 semi-automatic rifle. Hello, this is Nut and Fancy, running the Nut and Fancy project, or TMP as it is called. And at this point, I have lots of imitators that try to do exactly the same things I do. But you have found the original. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, the good ratings, the wonderful emails. I appreciate all of that. I can't and won't do it without you. It takes a lot of work to knock out a review of this. Uh, detail, at least, covering all the items that I think prospective users and buyers will need to know about a piece of gear like the 1022. As I sometimes do, I open part two with pictures and videos from the Nut and Fancy clan to introduce the subject, of course, the 1022. We have had lots of adventures with this gun in many different varieties and will continue to do so. And the images will be posted here at TMP. Such a fun little gun. My experience, like I said in part one, dates way back as of the filming of this or the recording of this video. 33 years to be exact with that gun in particular. The Ruger 1022 circa 1976, which I discussed in part one. And did you check out that hilarious image of me as a kid, 1978, with that very gun slung over my shoulder? It was the heart and soul of my survival system back then. It's all I had, and it functioned in that capacity. And yes, I was survival-oriented and systems-oriented, even at that age. Maybe the very observant team peers will have noted the Level 2 First Aid Kit, on the back of my belt and the U.S. Air Force Combat Survival Knife strapped to my belt. I guess I was just destined to be a gear reviewer. And here we go with another piece of gear which is outstanding. The Ruger 1022. Part 2, we're going to pick it up and talk about the ergonomics, versatility, the field strip, reliability, durability. And we'll be pressed for time like we normally are. And I try to give you guys good details. Doesn't mean I'll get everything in there. But you'll see I'll cover most things. Let's start it off with ergonomics. And we're going to look at this gun. This is the 1994 Circa 1022 Walmart only edition that you saw with Age 4 Tactical Doodle in Part 1. Still in our possession, still part of our inventory, wearing a beautiful black green laminated stock. The contour of this stock is very representative of a normal Woodstock standard size 1022 carbine. One thing I thought when I was a kid is that that front grip was just a little bit big for me back then. Now as an adult it's perfectly sized. Um, but some kids, maybe some women, will think that that's a little fat. The length of pull on a standard 1022 stock is, if I'm not mistaken, just under 14 inches. Maybe 13 and 7 eighths inches, which I find to be ideal for an adult male. Depends on how big you are and you know how tall you are, probably better said, if you will find that comfortable or not. By way of reference, the M1A length of pull is exactly the same. Pretty close to it. So it's a very standard length of pull. And newbies, when I say length of pull, I mean how uh, the distance for me to reach the trigger from the end of the stock. And that drives right to the heart of how comfortable a stock will fit you. But if you don't like that length of pull, if it's a little bit too long, you can get a 1022 compact. And here's one right here. The catalog number on this one is CRR-BBZ. This is a Davidson's exclusive, also wearing a variation of that beautiful black green laminated stock. And this has a much shorter length of pull for maybe kids, some female shooters, or just small statured dudes. 
12 and 3 quarter inches is LOP on this gun. That'll make it very comfortable to shoot for smaller statured shooters. And you saw me, nothing fancy, running this gun already. I took it out in a 1022 running gun with some TMP friends, and we shot it. I just wanted to check it out. And the 12 and 3 quarter inch length of pull really isn't a factor when I'm running a red dot. This, of course, is a Millet SP1 3MOA 1 inch tube red dot. It fits this gun perfectly. It's lightweight, reliable, and, of course, length of pull with a red dot is not an issue. Also, this stock on the compact version has a narrower, I can't speak, narrower <laughs> forearm. See the difference in width there? So again, for women, kids, maybe this is the gun you'd want to go with. In the background we have here is one of my favorite standard 1022s currently being produced. And again, all this is subject to change as time goes on. Ruger is constantly changing the varieties and types of their 1022s. This one here is a 1022 RPF, and it wears a composite synthetic stock, which is probably my favorite one that, 1020, that Ruger has produced yet. It wears a very slender forearm. It is not the fatter forearm shown on the wood version. By the way, my battery's on its last legs. If it dies, as usual, I'll just join the clips. See that, though? Very comfortable. Has some molded-in checkering, which is actually pretty good. Gives you some purchase on that forearm. Good pistol grip, also molded in checkering. Nice form and the same length of pull we talked about. And unlike some other 1022s, this actually has some traction on the butt area. It's a molded in butt plate, not a screw on variety that you have with the Woodstock 1022s. This has always been a minor beef with me that they would put on a slick plastic, once upon a time, metal butt plate. The one in the background there, that 1976 10 has an aluminum butt plate. But current versions have plastic. And like I always do, let me turn it so you can see it with the light, I either put black athletic tape on it, like I did with this version, or, as you will see on the back of the compact one, this user's done put some anti-slip traction tape on it. Vinyl variety. Great addition to the 1022. Keeps it on your shoulder so it doesn't slip all the way around. Excellent. Now the other side to the stock issue is aesthetics. And there are a lot of varieties of 1022s out there. Different kinds of woods. And I'm just talking factory. We haven't even got into the accessories par portion of the talking points yet. But these are two. I love this coloration. The black green laminated. But there's a lot more out there than just that. And if guys are looking for that enjoyment level out of their stock, there are other options from the Ruger factory. I'm going to show you one here that I have on loan, and this is a gorgeous special edition Ruger 1022. It's called the Tallow, T-A-L-O 1022. It wears a limited edition French walnut stock with outstanding checkering, a burnished and mill or cut in Ruger logo. Look how cool that is. Beautiful character in that French walnut stock with a full, if I'm not mistaken, yep, it does. Has a full Monte Carlo cheek piece in it. Checkering on both sides. Interesting detail around the magazine well area. Just a beautiful, beautiful gun. Limited edition. And look at annotation, I'll show you what the call number on is that. I think this was a distributor exclusive. You couldn't go into a store and buy this. You'd have to probably buy it through Gallery of Guns. I think it was issued in 2008. You might find a couple more out there. But this isn't the only one that has a lot of character to it. Ruger for years has produced several varieties of the 1022 in wood stocks. To include the man liquor variety. Hope I'm saying that right. The the wood that goes all the way to the tip of the gun. They produce that for a number of years. There's various custom sporter editions of the Ruger 1022. Some straight um, stocks that do not have a pistol grip. Those are shown on the the web page right now. So many varieties. And of course you have here's another distributor exclusive. This is a synthetic. This is the older version of the synthetic stock, if I'm not mistaken, on this Real Tree Hardwoods Camouflage 1022. This is Last Suspect's gun. I bought it used, actually. You're going to die at the price. 110 bucks. That's right. Got it used. Brand new, almost. 
That's a beautiful coloration. Very cool looking. This is a kind of gun or 1022 you don't want to change. You just want to leave it the way it is uh, and we won't modify it. But yeah, lots of colorations. And these are all stock Ruger factory. Everything I'm showing you is Ruger factory. We haven't even got into all the different other stock options you can do with a Ruger. So while we're talking about ergonomics, let's talk about the sights on the standard 1022 carbine. I like them. I can't really line them up for the camera because of the angles I got going today. But it has a folding rear leaf mating to a brass bead on the front blade. I think it provides an adequately precise and easily identifiable sight picture. I've been shooting with it for over 33 years and I like it. You can adjust for elevation easily on the rear sight blade if you need to. Sorry that's not focusing. Let me put some paper there. If you need to, on the rear uh, sight, you can drift it left or right in the dovetail to account for windage if you need to. Great sight. The weaknesses that I've noted through the years are once in a while, you got to be careful of these little screws. You can break them off. I've had to replace those before. Also, I've had the brass bead on several 1022s fall out, and I had to replace that. So, a couple minor things, but be aware. Overall, great sights. How about the trigger on the 1022? I think out of the box, for most people, it's excellent. They will have no complaints about it. For us that maybe want a finer trigger pull, and for me, more rapid fire capability, maybe an aftermarket trigger is in order. I have noted that inside of the newer 1022s, they're putting a CNC milled bushingless hammer. And there are some rumors out there that says that that provides actually a smoother trigger pull for out of the box 1022s. I have not confirmed that. Uh, this one is a new 1022 on loan and it is uh, has a adequate trigger pull. I wouldn't term it outstanding or excellent, but it's fine for its purpose. I don't have a trigger pull scale, so I can't tell you exactly, but you will improve it with an aftermarket trigger, no doubt. Operation of the 1022 is very simple, as is the whole gun. It's just straightforward. Here's your bolt and your operating handle. Simple to charge from the magazine. Some guys will put an extended bolt handle on here. The one that's on there is adequate for most users. I am kind of changing. I might put on extended bolt handles on some of mine. I'll show you that on the decoat Tapco version, that, something that we've learned with that. I've rearranged the guns on the table to better illustrate the differences between Ruger's factory magazine latches on the 1022. Also using some spare parts, I'll show you that. On the left hand side is the aluminum factory Ruger 1022 mag latch. On the right is the now new polymer extended tab magazine latch or release for the 1022. Installed in the guns, they look like this using the 1976 1022 as an example. There's the flush mount. Does not protrude beneath the bottom of the stock. The way you actuate it, at least the way I did, is with my middle finger, with my strong hand. Adequately fast once you become practiced in the technique. But I much prefer that extended magazine release. Much prefer it. And for years I added them to all my 1022s. Uh, by myself since it was such an inexpensive addition and you can see that protrudes beneath the bottom of the stock it makes that mag change all that much easier and quicker which is good if like me your POU is speed like in a run and gun uh, don't go crazy on the magazine latches if you have an older 1022 like this my recommendation is just to order one direct from Ruger they have an outstanding parts department inexpensive prices they'll ship them right to you just say hey I want this part I'll annotate what part that is from Ruger and there's still some aftermarket ones that are made of nylon as well years ago I outfitted this Butler Creek 1022 with a Volkortsen extended magazine latch you can see that that's milled out of aluminum has a different profile very comfortable fast and ergonomic in use a little more expensive though um, and that will bring us to another way to increase the speed of your 1022, and that is understanding the manipulation of the bolt. Amazingly, this throws a lot of dudes for some loops, and I've seen some confusion out in the shooting field with 1022s. I'm going to use this Tallow Special Edition one as an example since it's completely stock. As it comes from the factory, in order to lock the bolt back, we'll retract the bolt and then press and hold the magazine lock button which protrudes from the front of the trigger guard. Then release the bolt. Voila. 
bolt is locked open. That's how I usually like to transport my 1022s, just to make sure that they are indeed empty. Now, to release it, a lot of guys think it's just a matter of retracting and releasing the bolt. Not so fast. It doesn't work that way on a stock 1022. What I have to do is retract the bolt, press and release the bolt lock, and then the bolt will fly forward. Very simple once you understand the concept. The reason is in the standard bolt lock or bolt release of the 1022 is milled these slots which hold the ejector pin. And it's designed to work just like I showed you. If you want to speed up the operation of your 1022, install what's called an auto bolt release. Here's one from Christie's. They come from a lot of different manufacturers. They all run around $10. And you can see that in an auto bolt release that those notches are milled away. It's just one big hole. Let me orientate that the right way. There we go. And you could probably do that yourself. Just take your Dremel tool, mill that little hump out, and voila, you have an auto bolt release. And how that functions, I'll use a 1976 10-22 as an example because, yes, I put them in all my guns to speed up their operation. So I'll lock it back the same way, and then to load it, just release. You don't even have to touch the bolt lock on the top. Once again, quick. Just slam in a new magazine. Auto bolt release, extended magazine release for most 10-22s are highly recommended accessories if you don't already ha have them from nothing fancy. And that finishes off the ergonomics. Suffice it to say, a very ergonomic, simple gun in operation, that's a 1022. Once you understand just a few idiosyncrasies of the design, you'll have no problems. That brings us to versatility and accessories. Oh man, there's lots to talk about. I'm gonna be time crunched, so I gotta start cruising. We're gonna go back to the Midway USA catalog for this portion. Having sold in the millions, the Ruger 1022 has all kinds of aftermarket parts to choose from. And that is a very good thing. The outgrowth of a tremendously successful and popular design. When you talk about or consider accessories, understand what your own philosophy of use is going to be for your particular 1022. If you're going to be a bench rest shooter, then maybe a really heavy stock a really heavy barrel would be the order of the day because you don't really care about weight, right? In fact, the more weight you have, the better off you're going to be to make those one whole groups. If, like me, you're going to have some running guns in your future, perhaps you're going to go backpacking with your rifle, then weight is critical. And if you add too much weight to your 1022, it's going to be unpleasant to port along. I speak from experience, and my friend Bugget Nuster had a target model 1022 years ago. I told him not to buy it. He bought it, and the reason I said don't buy it is because I knew his POU was backpacking. So we went hiking one year uh, in the snow, snowshoeing, and he brought his Target Model 1022, and he was miserable. It's not fun to carry. It's about 7.5 pounds. That's without optics. You add optics on there, then it's going to be maybe 8.5 pounds, depending on what you put. But if you keep your gun lightweight, you really watch what accessories you put on it then you can maintain those inherently fast and enjoyable handling characteristics of the stock 1022. So keep in mind your POU, spend your money wisely too. You can go way overboard on outfitting your 1022 in terms of money. You can easily end up with a gun well over $1,000, just a 22 rifle. Depends on what you define as your second type of cool. Me, I gravitate towards the high value, useful accessories, ones that will really change the way the gun handles and maybe increase its speed for my running guns. Uh, some I've already shown you, the extended magazine latch, the auto bolt release, very inexpensive to add, big gains in speed. Some names in the aftermarket accessories uh, columns stand out. Volcourse and Cu Custom is one of them. Everything they make is super high quality. There's this TG2000 match trigger. Guess what, I have experience with that. Because Mrs. Nut and Fancy bought me one for Christmas 12 years ago. Actually, it may have been even longer than that. There it is, installed in my Butler Creek 1022. It has a Butler Creek carbon fiber stock on it. Um, barrel, I mean. That is a great trigger group. Fast, crisp. Man, it's just an awesome, awesome trigger. And they have excellent customer service. I actually had to call Todd Volkortz, and I think was his name, on this. And he helped me out when I installed it. Uh, great customer service from Volkortz. And... Maybe not the most inexpensive place when it comes to accessories, but top-notch quality all the way around. 
Butler Creek is another name. They make great stocks. As you can see, I just put that barrel, or I have that barrel on my other 1022. Great name and accessories. Clark Custom, Power Custom, and the list goes on and on. Let me just fan through this really quick, and I'll show you some accessories highlighted in green, which I think are useful. One is a trigger group. Uh, I already showed you that, Volcourse in one. One of my favorites now, because of its price, is a Clark Custom 1022 trigger. I have it installed in one of my 1022s, and I like it a lot. Maybe not quite as outstanding as the Volcourse one, but still nice, well-machined, nice crisp let off, easy to install, and it won't break the bank. Here, Midway sells it currently $2,009 for $65. I think when I got mine, I found it for $55. Uh, you could easily spend over $100 for a trigger modification on a 1022. If you're in the money, you can go with a JARD, that's J-A-R-D Incorporated Trigger Group. I think it's every bit as good as a Volcorsen one. My buddy, uh, sadly missing, has one of those on his 1022, and he's liked it. Um, so triggers, I think, are a good modification. Not necessary, though. You don't have to modify the stock trigger at all to maintain that speed. How about stocks? I'm going to show you. There's lots to choose from. I can't cover them all. I'm just going to show you ones that I like a lot. First off, I'm going back to 1981. I was trying to remember the name of the stock. You saw it right by my snow cave in the beginning of part one. It was called the Black Warrior folding stock. I don't know if Choate Industries made this or not. It's very similar to the Butler Creek one. I'll show you here in a sec. But it is a 1022 folding stock. Years ago, I modified it, modified it to have some swivels on the side, as I found in backpacking. It certainly carries better slung to the side with the pistol grip. Here's the version by Butler Creek currently being marketed. Not much different. It's the same sturdy, solid lockup folding stock for the 1022. I've used these for years. A uh, couple criticisms I would have is it has a very short length of pull on it. I've built spacers out of plexiglass before to increase that length of pull. If you're small stature or if you just like a short LOP, you'll like the Butler Creek folding stock. Generally, they lock up pretty solid. This one has just a very slight movement in it. You might have to like increase uh, or actually tighten that Allen head on the other side of it. The only thing I would say that a Ruger, I'm sorry, a Butler Creek folding stock does not have is accommodations for forward accessories. For run and gun, type activities, I like a light capability. And the Butler Creek stock doesn't have that. And it's a tapered stock, so I'd have to kind of fashion one that would go parallel to the bore axis. Doable, but not included. Currently, my favorite aftermarket stock, let me roll it in here and grab it, is the Tapco Intrafusion stock. You'll see this in a separate video, but this is a stock as modified by me, nothing fancy, in Tactical Coyote Brown. What a great stock this is. Yes, I have trigger time on it. I have found it to be lightweight, ergonomic, has accessory rails on the bottom for a forward vertical grip. I've attached a Streamlight tactical illuminator mount on the side. I didn't need more rail space than that. Uh, I won't talk many, much more details than that, but it's just a great ergonomic stock. Lo I love the M249 pistol grip on it too. And adjustable length of pull strap in the way here in the rear kind of with an M4 style collapsible stock that's a Tapco Intrafusion stock probably probably my overall favorite 1022 stock as of now if for whatever reason you can't use a folding stock where you live or you just like a full stock lots of good options to choose from again the RPF 1022 I love the synthetic stock as it comes from the factory also consider perhaps the Butler Creek version. This one is set up for 0.92 inch diameter barrels. I've ran it well over 12 years on this 1022 and it's probably my overall favorite fixed stock for a 1022. Has nice length of pull on it, a rubber recoil pad. I always tape it with electrical tape so it doesn't get hung up on the shoulder. Sharp check ring both on the forearm and the full pistol grip. Great stock. And it's extremely lightweight. As outfitted uh, with the RV9 Weaver Scope, previously reviewed in TMP, this gun weighs under 6 pounds. And that's partially due to that Butler Creek carbon fiber composite barrel. 
And speaking of barrels, uh, don't feel like for accuracy you have to retrofit your 1022. To me, getting a thicker barrel is kind of going into the realm of second kind of cool. Not really needed, but a lot of guys dig it, including me. Uh, so yeah, I outfitted this one many years ago. Uh, so that's a good option. I have found that the Butler Creek barrels with their bench match chambers uh, will have feeding issues once in a while. I'll get jams with this gun depending on the ammunition used once in a while. Definitely not as reliable as a factory 1022 barrel. Lots of barrel options out there. Full Quartz and make some. Butler Creek makes others. I think another company called Green Mountain. But again, if your POU is lightweight, watch those steel, all steel barrels. This one's Ruger Factory. But watch the all steel barrels. You'll just uh, make a boat anchor out of your gun. Let's go over to this gun here. I want to show you a tactical solutions barrel. This is in brown with their compensator. What a cool barrel that is. I prefer it over the Butler Creek version. I love the compensator. I love the fit and finish of everything that Tactical Solutions makes. I think they're up in Idaho. And this is a very lightweight gun. Wearing a Hogue overmolded Coyote Tan stock. Great gun. This is a perfect running gun. The only thing it really lacks is a single point sling setup. Maybe a light setup as well. Super, super gun. Time to wrap it up. I got to do this in two parts. Really quickly, the maintenance and field stripping on the 1022 are very straightforward, very easy. Just remove the stock takedown screw, the barrel band screw, and then you can lift out the entire barreled action of the 1022, giving you access to all its modular components as nicely illustrated in the Ruger 1022 manual. As you can see, the aluminum receiver the bolt guide, the bolt trigger group, and the barrel retained by the V-block, all easily accessed, easily replaced with those perhaps upgraded versions from the aftermarket. And there's the trigger components. This is looks complicated, but once you get in there and you see the relationship of all the parts, easy to put back together. I may make a separate vid on this sometime. Great, straightforward, simple to work on design, the 1022. Also very reliable and very durable. Now, reliability when you're shooting a 10-22 long rifle chambering, you know, it's not going to be 100%. Sometimes you're just going to have a bobble, usually related to ammunition, but that's most 22 firearms. 10-22 is no different. Overall, though, it's probably been the most reliable 22 automatic, or one of the most reliable 10-22 semi-automatic guns I've fired. And durability is tops, as I've shown you from that 1970s era 10-22. These guns just keep trucking and trucking along. They don't wear out. That's why I call the Ruger 10-22 the everyman's gun. Accurate, reliable, affordable, ergonomic, lightweight, fast handling. Man, there's really not anything I don't like about the design. If it had a last shot hold open, that would probably really complete it for me. But that's a minor quibble. The Ruger 1022, highly recommended by me, Nut and Fancy, an outstanding choice for all the reasons we've talked about. Signing off, way out of time. Thanks so much. This is Nut and Fancy with another gun review. Peace. Excellent. And then you got just a tassel, right? Four pounds? like that setup.